Hello, my name is Omri and welcome to my very first tutorial ever, or very first speaking tutorial at least. And this is what it's going to be about Redshift, more specifically about how to render uh, volumes inside of Redshift. So let's just get right into it. I'm going to launch my Redshift layout and I'm going to dock my render PV from my other screen over here so you guys can see. For now I'm going to hit control and left click on these dots to close it down to here and as you see we got all these great stuff here I'm also going to go to my uh, content browser and I'm going to search for a studio, I just have this studio floor, you probably don't have this in your content browser, I put this for myself here but it's pretty basic to make and you don't really need this for the volume, it's just uh, to have something in the background I'm also going to grab a dome light and I'm going to grab HRI link which is again very unnecessary this is all just set up so this looks better and Link is actually a plugin by Grayscale Green again that is meant to create an easier way for you to load HDRI image oh, not HDRI images but HDR images into your scene without needing to go into your file explorer etc so we got that set up and finally we can go in and just grab our volume and yeah um, in our volume we have a path and that path wants a VDB file now I have this bunny cloud VDB which I'm gonna use for this so it's pretty it's a stock kind of file you can I'll probably leave a link in the description on how to get it for free online uh, but what is a VDB file? Well VDB stands for voxel I'm pretty sure voxel database or voxel data something but the key word here is voxels and voxels are like pixels in 3d so if you have a normal image 1920 by 1080 90 or 4k whatever that number 1920 by 1080 is the, the amount of pixels the resolution of your of your image Voxels are the same as pixels, only in 3D. They're, bas they're basically dots in a 3D, uh, in 3D space, and the resolution is how big, the, the, how many dots are there compared to the size of the the space. And anyway, I hope I explained that well. I'll try to explain even better going forward. But for now, let's just launch this VDB bunny. And if we turn off our studio, we, we can see we got this uh, empty box, which is actually the cage. So if in a 2D image you get just again 1920 by 1080, here you got three axes, right? So you got pretty much the same as 1920 by 1080. You got I don't know what this is, but it's like 10,000 by 10,000 by 500. I have no idea. I'm just guessing, but yeah, that's the the idea of voxels, right? 3D pixels. We still aren't seeing anything, so let's go to our preview over here and enable point points. Oh, I'm sorry about that. And we got some points. Let's up the point amount to like 50. There you go. We got kind of more of a bunny shape. If you want to have a better uh, preview in your viewport, you can met mess mess with these as much as you want. But yeah, this is fine. Let's re-enable our studio and push this over. All right, so we got our bunny. We got pretty much everything we should need, right? So let's just run the render see what happens well whoops it looks like it crashed oh it, it doesn't look like it's crashed it looks like the, there's just not no bunny in there why that is why or why is that <laughs> sorry um well i remember there's a redshift material for volume so that might be the case let's try putting this over here still nothing maybe it's something in the material that we need to adjust and actually I actually did have this problem. I didn't know why I'm not seeing this bunny. So I went over to the Redshift documentation and they say you have these channels here which have to be filled by some parameter that is inside of your actual VDB file. All right, so an actual parameter that was used to create the simulation for your VDB. And those parameters are usually stuff like density, heat, uh, temperature, velocity etc 
Now to find out what channels your specific VDB file has, you can go over to your Richard volume and down here information and channels and this specific one only has density as you can see. So density is usually used to create uh, smoke or fog or stuff like that. So it makes sense that this bunny cloud is only has density. All right. If you had some sort of a fire, you probably also have temperature or emission or other stuff. All right. So that's that's that. We have density in both channels because in the documentation they said you should have these filled. Let's hit again. It says preparing volume objects. It didn't say that earlier, but it, oh, well, we got our bunny. That's interesting. That actually shouldn't have worked. I wonder why it did actually work. So when I first actually tested this, this is actually weird. So when I tested this the first time, I still didn't see any bunnies. And actually, if you go over to back to the Redshift documentation, you'll, you'll probably see that they say that if you don't have any light sources in your scene that have a contribution scale in the volume tab, then your volume will be invisible. So I don't know why, I, maybe this is a bug. I have no idea why I'm actually seeing the bunny, but I do know that if you are not seeing the bunny, like I did the first time I tested this, it's probably, like, yeah, you see, yeah, just put this here. Important note, if the scene does not contain any volume affecting lights, the volume will render black. So I don't know why I'm actually catching this bunny, but if you don't, you should up the contribution scale all the way up to one. And that should well, it should be the same as this since it's already like, reacting to the light. I don't know what is going on here. But yeah, we got our bunny now. I guess, yeah, if you, yours is not working, just up the contribution scale. So now, that's that's all great and all, but I mean, it, it, it's doing some nice shadow. It's, it's actually 3D, and, but there's no detail at all. So that's, that's probably in the material for us to play with. So... I'm going to open this up and do something along the lines of that and run this. All right. Actually, while testing, uh, I've actually found this is not the most stable thing ever. Like it actually crashed on me a few times. So you might either want to dis disable the your force enabled IPR, which means this is going to render in buckets. Uh, if it, there you go, as you saw, which is kind of more stable than the force enable, and or you should you might just want to uh, just stop this, do your adjustments, and run this again. I'm gonna leave it on and hope that it's not gonna crash. It did crash on me several times. I'm gonna save this though, just in case. There you go. All right. So let's see how we can get this to not be so white and un detailed. Well, according to the Richard documentation again, you should treat the scatter absorption and emission as, uh, or if you want to understand them easily, you might want to use an analogy in which scatter is diffuse, absorption is transparency, and emission is self-illumination or luminance. Well, this looks pretty self-illuminated, so I'm gonna guess emission is the reason this is completely blown up. So turning down the scale off to zero or just removing the word density from the channel should just make this nice. Well, it did. This is kind of grainy though. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over to my dome light actually and just up the samples here to 128. That cleans it up a lot actually. I don't mind the background being too grainy actually. I only want this to be high. Nice. All right. So, whoops, not, no, whoa. There you go. I guess my two key was pressed. So that's that. If we just move the word density, it should do the same thing. Yep. So got a nicely cloudy bunny. Uh, whoops, cancel. I'm gonna turn down the scale as 0 0.05, which should be low enough for it to not do too much. 0 0.01. I'll just turn it off actually for now. Uh, let's go right up to the beginning to scatter and in scatter again you got your channels to put in your channels. Uh, the scatter coefficients 
and I'm, I'm not sure the about the actual like what it actually means but for me it's kind of like density in a way so zero is just, as you can see it's pretty transparent and it's also pretty it's basically saying how black does a thing a pixel need to be to to be transparent oh no let, let, I, I kind of think these are connected so zero means that this black is way more powerful 10 means this white is way, way more powerful the middle is kind of the middle i'm pretty sure this defaults to one which is a good default but you can kind of play with this to make it a little bit more dense but also a little bit brighter and yeah so if one is a bit too transparent for you which it is kind of for me because you can kind of see through this guy so you can maybe put this up to three and then miss with other parameters which i'll show you later to make this dark again and i'm gonna go over this in a second uh, absorption you got your coefficient absorption coefficient just like this scatter coefficient which creates a similar effect c0 just makes it completely disappear and very small numbers make it really white and very high numbers make it really black so it's very much like this only the other way around but one thing you can notice is that this makes it way blacker than this ever could so if you treat this again as transparency 10 is not transparent at all as you can see it isn't transparent and the lower you get it kind of gets more and more transparent which means it's kind of getting brighter because it's thinner in a way and i'm gonna leave it pretty high actually because i want to make a nice smoke right uh, next the absorption remap ramp if you pull this down it's kind of going to be really wide if you pull this all the way over here it's going to be even darker yeah so I'm going to put it like around here actually and if you pull this around something interesting will happen you see it's creating a box and that box if you remember if we go back to a viewport we see this box this is actually the volume cage that is being shown so when they created the simulation they created this volume cage the voxel cage which is kind of the resolution like again like 1920 by 1080 this is the resolution of the simulation but uh, that that is still there there's just kind of an alpha a 3d alpha thing going on with it so by pulling this up you're kind of revealing the alpha around it so it's kind of it's the same as pulling the blacks uh, uh, making the blacks kind of gray in the curves in after effects if you know what i'm i mean i hope you do but yeah, that's the absorption scale. I might make it slightly brighter. Something like that is cool. Uh, back to the emission. I'm pretty sure we went over this, actually. So, yeah, that's pretty much how you create smoke, at least, or how you set up volumes. Uh, one thing I, I do want to show at the end here, though, is how to create fire, because you're usually going to create these... You're usually going to use VDBs for smoke, fire, or fog, stuff like that, or clouds, maybe, like a bunny cloud. So let's see, we've seen how to make smoke. I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to make fog or clouds. So let's figure out how to make a fire. And you might think maybe twirl this down and make it fiery. Well, no, we're going to need some emission. Let's pull this up to one. That's actually a cool looking effect if we take this slightly lower this is nice but let's put this at like one and then let's twirl this down and load the heat preset and it's slightly overly saturated so i might pull this down that's better it's slightly too uh, dull and dark so maybe pull this up yeah this is a pretty good fire but it's it's still kind of gray. It's like fire with a dust texture on top of it. And the reason for that is this scatter remap. So if we turn this all the way white, you can see it. It, it is actually still gray, all right? And th this gray is the reason this is gray, all right? Because this th this still exists. This diffuse. By turning on the emission, you're not turning off the scatter. So let's go over here and maybe set this to like a yellowy vibe. And you might want to. You might think, well, maybe I'll turn this to like a dark um, 
orange no that's gonna mess things up and again this is the same as pulling this up it's it's pretty much showing clipping the alpha kind of so you can kind of see the edges of the alpha of the bunny of the 3d alpha if you put this all the way to white it's gonna you're gonna make things really weird so you should leave this at at black let's make this slightly redder and let's pull this up back to 0 0.1 and this is neat, and then you can mess with this absorption coefficient to your heart's content until you like how bright it is. Or you can also do stuff like that, obviously. I'm going to leave it here, though. And then you can also increase the saturation of this to make it more or less saturated. So this slow, small number will make it kind of less saturated, which I actually like more. Obviously, you can also tweak these to make it them less saturated which should help but now it looks kind of really faded and color corrected so you might want to up this and it's kind of a game like that I like this actually so yeah that's how you create a bunny you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna duplicate for the ending here I'm gonna duplicate this bunny I'm gonna stop the render so it doesn't lag so much I'm gonna rotate it by 180 and I'm going to pull it over and I'm going to duplicate this material I'm going to go into this one and load oh is there no not one of these oh, whatever I'll just change this to white copy paste basically I'm creating one fire one and one smoke <laughs> So maybe like five, zero on this actually, three. Yeah, there you go. That's a cool frame. All right, so yeah, that is how to create volumes in Redshift. Uh, that's how, like I, when I first tried to do volumes in Redshift, I went through all the problems I, went through trying to pull this off so i hope i helped you in that regard and yeah i don't really know how to finish the toys yet this is my first one so thank you very much for watching and i guess i'll see you in the next one